What's up, freaks? What's up, freaks? What are you already smirking about? <laughs> I always do. <laughs> just, 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 mm, and that's what he always like does. The Joker, mm. like Pennywise. I am Pennywise. Up. Welcome to the Russian and the Freak episode number nine today with the Freak and the Russian. This is episode number nine. We're going to be talking today about how to maintain order and discipline, sticking to your your daily habits, your routines throughout the chaos and changes in life. When it, whether you're working, traveling, emergencies, disasters, the weekend, which seems to be fucking disasters for most people, or the invasion because the invasion is coming the invasion is here with the, with the, what's going on in the world as you know the russian and the freak shows are about how to maintain your equilibrium and function in a dysfunctional world as a freak family in business life so you can you can transform your chaotic complexity into your own personal fucking normalcy so let's do this let's make it happen and before we get started in case no one told you today you are fucking awesome Let's get this going. So we're going to talk about how to stay on routine, how to stay on target, on task, no matter how shit is going in the world and how to do it basically as a family. Like right now, there's hurricanes going on in in California. There's wildfires going on all the time. They have earthquakes. There's all kinds of shit going on. You never know what's going to happen. So we're going to talk about how to basically navigate that world and, and, and not make a bunch of fucking excuses about why you're not doing the things you're supposed to be doing, the things you know you're supposed to be doing, the things you can still be doing even through all this. And it all all comes down to your attitude and effort. Yeah, attitude and effort at the approach and, of course, perspective. And we're going to start asking you, what are the non-negotiables in your life? What do you do daily Sorry. on a weekend and... No matter what day of the week it is, or it's vacation, or it's a, anything happening in the world, that it's non-negotiable. It's something, come here, no, it's, yeah. something, it's something that you do no matter what. We would love to hear from you guys. Something that it must happen daily in your habits. Please list them because... As you, as you might know, maybe this is your first time on this show and listening to us. Uh, we both are coaches. We life coaches. We we started in peak physique as a coach on the floor. We've been doing this for over twenty years, and we've been coaching people all around the world, helping this them pre- creating camera. and developing habits. It seems like I am out of the camera speaking, so you guys just <laughs> <hear the balls. laughs> ha ha ha. <laughs> but this is the crazy show. Okay, that's the whole part. So. As, as coaches, we, we, we see this daily and we coach people in their lives to develop these habits, right? Because as we know, if you develop the habit, if you create... How did I routine, forget to bring my chair this week? I forgot my chair this week because sometimes... You, or, I mean, my legs can only, are, can only endure standing for so long. Holy crap. I, I, That's yeah, your it, intro? That's your intro. This is how I start. Oh, my God. I'm going to sit on the sink over here. Otherwise, there's <laughs> a sink in my office, but there's a whole sink in like kitchen area. We're going to have a seat it's here. It's the Russian and the freak show. So, so yes, write it down, guys. This is, this is life. This is how we roll here, okay? So, please write it down, your daily routines, but the point is that we help this you to develop This is our main that. camera. Okay. I'm going to... I didn't say go the... through the wall. <laughs> Holy shit. Eight man strong. Eight man strong right here. It says something on the back, too. Yeah, hold Forget on. what it says. What does it say? Warpath of Redemption. This was from a recent Didn't graduate of the project from just this Friday, a graduate of the projects. Keep the kids busy. That's your non-negotiable. Yes. I love it. The the non-negotiable, and that is one of them, is just having time, spending time with the kids. No matter what's going on, you're trapped in the house, you're locked down, there's a, a freaking quarantines, terrorist attacks, freaking the invasions coming, the, the disasters, emergencies, whatever happens. You're trapped in the house or have to get out of the house. You need to be prepared for all this stuff. But as this shit happens, this stuff can't be an excuse to knock you off of your routine and your habits because that's what's going to fuck you up even more is not being on that. That's what's going to keep you rolling and help you survive these things is by keeping to those simple, the basics, going back to the basics, going back to the fundamentals. Those cannot be fucking broken for anything. And we're going to break those down. What are some of those non-negotiables? We're going to go over them. Obviously, we're going to start off with just working out, with exercise, keeping your body healthy and fit. It's needed, especially during times of stress. During, yeah, there could be 
emergencies and disasters, but you need to keep your body moving. If you want to call the exercise, maybe it's, it's physical labor you need to do just to deal with whatever the hell is going on. But you have to keep your body moving. Otherwise, you're going to be slow. You're going to be lethargic. You're not going to have energy. You're going to lose your durability. If you're normally moving every day, you can't just sit around and, and, and mope and boo fucking who, poor little me. You need to keep it moving. And if you can even get an actual workout in. And the way to do that is even, let's say even just traveling on vacation. Have a, have, have a prepared bag. We have a bag, a little travel workout bag that has a little workout gear in it with exercise bands, monster bands, sliders, TRX, jump rope, stretch strap. Fits in a tiny little bag like this. And if you don't know what these are, make a comment or send us a message. We can take a picture and send it to you so you can create your bag today this weekend guys if you do not have a bag like this please do it and we will tell you exactly how to make one because it will be useful let me tell you it will be useful because that's what we do and then and then have a workout prepared i mean we have tons of workouts there's thousands of workouts in my head just from decades and decades of training and coaching and working out but have a prepared workout i call it a back pocket workout and have it ready Meaning it's written down. It's something you can do quick with, with no exercise. You're, str you're stranded in a hotel for an extra day because you had a layover flight. There's no gym in the place or it's a shithole. Like we were in some, sl some slummy ass place in New Jersey recently where the gym was just rotted and, and closed and had to do shit in the room by myself. Have a back pocket workout where you know exactly what you're going to do. You can have no equipment. Even if you have no equipment, even if you didn't have that travel bag for whatever reason, you want to be ready for everything. You want to have a plan A, a plan B, a plan C, all the way to motherfucking Z. With all of these things we're talking about, starting with the workout. So every one of these things we're talking about, we want you to be prepared, whether it's uh, you're stranded on traveling, you're on vacation, and, even, and you have the resources with you, you're stuck at home for an emergency, there's disasters going on. Like All these different things we're talking about need to be prepared for all those different contingencies, all those different possibilities. So have the bag planned, have the workout planned, meaning you know exactly you have a list of just exercise. You could run straight through. You can get a 15... 20 minute circuit in that will wipe your ass out and if that's all you did if you if you pushed it you could probably get in the best shape of your life just doing that of course we do more than that because we're high achievers we're above and beyond we want to be fucking high performers but if that's all you did for, just to get through those times that would be much more than enough and obviously a thousand fucking times better than doing nothing and it'll keep your energy keep your positivity keep your your moving keep your blood flowing to deal with the shit that's going on because you know what working out's going to do for you how it's going to raise your levels of your whatever endorphins all that other bullshit that they talk about yeah, the but happy it's hormone right but it's all all part of it yes and and just write it down have you had a situation when you actually were away or maybe something happened like even i know new york got hit right all these different states and this this uh, hurricane is still traveling up north i saw it this morning so write it down in situations like this uh, how were you prepared? And when you were traveling somewhere, when there was no resources for a workout, did you, did it stop you? Camera. Did it stop you from from actually working out? And if it did, why? Because do you remember when we were traveling a few years ago? That was what North South Carolina I always making a mistake. Either South or North, it doesn't matter. Uh, we were climbing up the stairs. What floor was it? What fifteen. Fifteen. The 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 gym was. This was a box, literally going in one piece of equipment. When we looked at it, and this is what we always do when we travel, the first thing we're going to see is the gym. We don't go and are see how many screaming? restaurants Jeez. are there. I always scream. It's that, we don't see how many, we don't check how you many restaurants. You keep bumping into shit. What are you I'm doing over here? And I you're going to step on my fucking toe. I, I'm afraid of your toe that got squished today for the workout. I'm afraid I'm going to go into the wall. So, uh, okay, I, I got distracted. So, guys... The little, literally, this gym was awful, it's tiny, small gym, and because we were prepared, we had the workout equipment with us, and even if we didn't, the body weight workout at the beach is awesome. So if you don't know how to create a workout, send us a message. We can, we can literally quickly send you a quick workout of body weight that will wipe your ass, like Steve said. But that's what we do. We'll the first wipe thing, your ass. Yeah, that's what It will <laughs> wipe your ass. So she will help you. She will give you a personalized plan on how to wipe your ass when you're sitting on the shitter <laughs> so you can have a nice clean ass when you're done taking a dump. Not in this way. In, this, in a way so that... Very, it's a the, Russian technique. They have the Russian, Russian technique of wiping your ass. It's going to knock you out. We will wipe your ass. 
that's the whole idea of the show. We got to smile and laugh. So yes, send us a message. And as I was saying, the, the recent even the trip that we did to Costa Rica, we of course got our travel bag, our workouts were in the center of the square when everybody were walking by and saying, good job guys. Uh, you know, kind of going by, it was like a really in the center of the square. We hook up our bands into the lamps. We almost knocked down the lamps of of doing the chest press and the rows. People are laughing. This is pretty funny. Yes, wipe and, your ass. And, and we were doing push-ups on the benches. But, you know, I have to tell you, people were walking by and and, and nobody really joined us for this workout. The whole entire family was working out. Excellent. Okay. And and we were just continue with the workout using our equipment, but the whole point was that Jim Jim was not allowing the kids. So we had to figure out what can we do so our family can will all stay. wipe their asses at the same time out in public. It was a great thing. People are giving high fives. <laughs> you are an excellent fucking ass wiper. And then the next thing is nutrition is eating and being prepared for that. And not just we're not just talking about a vacation. Of course, that's what you could say. You could vac- say a vacation. You could say traveling for business. You could say you were traveling and then you were, we had a layover recently and we were stuck in a, a hotel in some little town. I don't even know where. It wasn't a little town, but it was a little little hotel in the middle of nowhere. Or when you're stuck in the house. All these things. We want to think about for all these things. Not just the workout, but then also the nutrition. When you're going somewhere, bring extra shit with you. Like we were stuck for an extra two days. It was in Denver, but they've just shuttled it out to some little airport in the middle of nowhere not even in the, in Denver, the city of Denver. So we were sitting there and, and now stuck for two extra days, nowhere really to get good, healthy food around. But luckily, in the luggage, there's still leftover extra additional stuff. I'm bringing tons, a, a whole extra checked-in bag for luggage just with food and supplements and gear and extra sneakers, extra socks, just in case times like that, you need to stay there for an extra couple of days. Who knows? Who knows what's going to happen when you're away somewhere or out of town or going somewhere and they say, all right, now they're, the world is shut down. You have to stay where you are. You got to stay locked down in the fucking hotel you're in. Who knows what? I'm going to be prepared for anything. So always have extra, but that's not just when you're traveling, not just in, also in your house, have extra food, have extra water, have survival food. We're going to get into the survival stuff in a little bit, but be prepared for all that stuff. So, so far, that's the, the exercise and the nutrition. Yes, but I have a question for you. Like, what kind of food? And are you prepared for a disaster? Are you buying stuff that can stay on the shelf a little bit longer? If you're traveling, what do you take with you? Like, imagine if you're going somewhere and out of nowhere, the restaurants are, I don't know, it's shut down. You cannot get any food. You are in a strange country, maybe in a strange country, you cannot get your supplies. So what you should have in that bag, you should have definitely protein bars, protein chips. You should have this always because this stuff will stay longer on the shelf and having even two or three bars a day will let you survive. So this is really good point, guys. Make sure that no matter where you go, always have this. So with all these different scenarios, and I'm gonna keep repeating them because I don't want you to think just traveling. I want you to think, Everything that we're saying, which was traveling, work, emergencies, disasters, even the weekend. Don't get off of your habits and your rituals on the weekend. Whatever is going to happen, you need to stay focused with the workouts, the eating. The next thing is your education, your reading. You're, you're spending time reading on the weekend. That doesn't mean you should be doing, not stop doing your reading, stop doing your learning. Should constantly be like one of my top goals in life is just to seek and search for more knowledge. Because I was a, a dumb motherfucker for way too long. So, you could get in a book, a 300-page book, you can get decades of knowledge and wisdom from motherfuckers that are uh, smarter than all of us combined here. So have a plan for that. Bring, have physical books in your car. Have physical books, obviously, at home. Travel with physical books, but also then download them on your tablets. Download them on your phones. So you always have an option for getting your smart time in, for getting your reading in. If you're regularly reading all the time, make sure you keep that habit going. That's the shit that's going to keep you focused. Just because... There's, there, there's a, a hurricane outside because there's a, a wildfires doesn't mean you stop working out, doesn't mean you stop eating the right way, doesn't mean you stop feeding your fucking brain with reading. And speaking of the brain, also in meditating. Yes, and I know that a lot of you will be like, okay, but I don't have time to read. Guys, let's pause for a moment. Everything can be scheduled on your calendar. And when you do this, when you design this time to schedule for 
for 20 minutes to read, it's gonna happen. Like, I have questions for the ladies out there. I mean, we schedule our nails. We schedule our spa treatment. We schedule to go- Why the ladies? That's racist. No, Maybe men ladies, schedule their, uh, their I, nails and their spa treatment. Okay. I go get my, my pedicures go, done all the time. Guy, anybody, anyone, like guys too. I mean, obviously guys go and do that too, but like we schedule I have them time. shampoo and stuff my eyebrows. I have them shampoo my eyebrows. You don't see these things? They need the trimming. They don't need a trimming. They need fucking they weed grow. whacker. They need. They I'm gonna have the landscapers. I'm gonna have the landscapers, <laughs> landscapers deal with them. They get in my way sometimes. Sometimes I look down and I just see like this in front of my eyes. <laughs> I see that too. I'm like, what is this? He got the eyebrows extension. Some That's people have to like move think. their hair out of the way when they're sweating. I have to move my eyebrows out of the way. <laughs> he should be on the stage as a comedian. If a comedian is watching just this show, just should keep keep going. Hire him. So you, if you have call, to keep saying that. It makes it you, not good. You, you ruin call it. and make the appointment right you call you schedule yourself so schedule the same for your reading. ass wiping knowledge ass wiping put your ass wiping put your time block for your ass wiping on the calendar did you mention the audible and actually listening to the books as well no but have those downloaded have the the, the them i said down have them downloaded on your your tablet have them the readable version downloaded on there have the audio version downloaded and not just download not just meaning the app also save it to the memory card so it's offline so if you have lose your wi-fi you lose internet connection on your phone power lines are down whatever you have a backup plan also have the physical copy of the book have the readable copy of the book that's also downloaded so have backup plans to all this stuff again a b c d all the way to z you need to make sure whatever it takes that these non-negotiables no matter what the fuck happens in the world you don't get off track and I'm not saying that you're not going to edit this stuff. You're not going to modify this stuff. You're not going to probably use the same amount of time for this stuff. Obviously, there's a, 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 her, a earthquake or whatever the fuck, a hurricane outside. Probably a different time of day you're going to do it. But still, you have to find the space to do it because that's what's going to help you get through the shit is by sticking to your basics, your fundamentals, and your habits that are what keep you centered on the everyday fucking chaos of the world. So they're just going to keep you centered no matter what's going on out there in the world. Yes. Uh, also besides like even meditate like even on the weekends right not necessarily i will get up at 5 a.m to do this but i can use a meditation when i go to sleep and actually puts me down to sleep so on the weekend as steve said can be changed and modified based on what you do so if you do meditation in the morning during the week maybe you need to schedule at the same time now what other and there's so many meditation apps out there that you could use you could find stuff even on youtube there's no excuse for not any of this stuff the education all the education in the world is out there like i i'm convinced you could be a fucking brain surgeon or an astronaut just by looking up shit on youtube because i looked up some weird shit on youtube how to do shit on youtube it's you can get more there than any any education so think of that i'm meditating and then also what's the backup plan to a guided app like me i'm a i'm a knucklehead i'm a knuckle dragger i'm like a, a big ape that wouldn't know how to meditate on my own but worst case if you had to and i can't get the app because of whatever reason first of all on the app you can also download that stuff to be offline let's say that you don't even have the, the phones aren't even working whatever you can't even get on it it's dead well first bring extra chargers bring extra power sources we're going to get to that more survival stuff later but med you can still meditate in your fucking head like if you had to that you, no one could take that from you, you could do that anywhere in the world at any time at any place i know motherfuckers that right in the middle of the day they look like they just fell asleep and they, they claim they're meditating <laughs> And especially that some of you went through this right now when the power was out and you weren't able to even charge your phones or do this thing or maybe shoot an email. So having that backup is so important. Now, the other nego non-negotiable for us can be music. Like music, we use music in the morning uh, to create, to get into the zone of work. And for each of us might be something different, right? Do you have a moment in the morning that you need to write your emails, maybe send the emails to your team, to your team, maybe like get yourself going for this day? I created my own playlist for when I create. So it's only instrumental, so it doesn't bother me. But when I get ready for my workout, I need something different, something pumping, something vibrating, something that's going to get me going. So again, preparing something. What is it? Nothing. <laughs> you get pumped up you get pumped for your workout with vi your vibrator that's excellent that's just awesome <laughs> what with music <laughs> no you said you do your music and your vibrator right before to get you ready and pumped up get you ready for your workout good stuff good stuff <laughs> no. one time in the gym 
when they were working out, it's, it's, there was men and women. The gym, when we had the actual gyms, there was majority was probably 75% women at most of the time. Eventually, it evened out closer to 50-50, but mostly it was women. There was one class early in the morning, a 5 a.m. class, that I was there, and I think I was there with, with Tyson, the kid, and dog, and everything. They were all pretty much lived there. The Russians teaching the class, and it happened to be all men that day. There was like oh 10, or 11, 10 or 11 men in the class at 5 a.m. in the morning. And it was a cardio workout. It's medicine balls. You know, medicine ball slams. Partner toss and twists and throws. <laughs> slams against the wall. Slams on the floors. Jumping jacks with the medicine ball. All kinds of shit with the medicine ball. So it's a bunch of men. The workout's over. And we, we condition, you condition the members. And if you, <laughs> if you don't, you should condition the members to clean up the space afterwards. Not leaving their slime and sweat over the place. So the Russian... Wanted to make sure she kept things flowing for the day for the next class. <laughs> so she tells these like 11, 12, 13 men, whatever it is, here at 6 a.m. as they just finished the class. They're all out of breath and telling them, you, you all, you, you dirty men better clean your balls before you leave here. I'm not going to be walking around all day cleaning up your sweaty, stinky balls. This is nasty. I'm not going to be touching them. I'm not going to be doing it. I'm, not, I'm sick of touching your sweaty balls. She'd be touching. She was sick of touching their sweaty balls. Anyway, I don't even remember what we're talking about anymore. Sweaty balls, oh, vibrators, ass wiping. This is how you survive the fucking apocalypse is, is ass wiping, sweaty balls, and vibrators. That's fucking awesome. Let's keep it moving. On to, you got the point on that one. I don't know if I can, I, if I can speak again. The next one is journaling. Make, if you're journaling every day, when shit goes sideways or you're traveling or you're stranded in an airport or whatever it is, still fucking journal. Whether you have a journal that has prompts in it for you or you just have a blank book that you journal, you should know overall the main points of what you're writing in your journal every day. Like one of my pages is a blank page, but I know the things I'm writing there. I'm writing, what are my long-term personal, professional, health and fitness goals? What are my short-term personal, professional, and fitness goals? What am I grateful for? What are the five things that I accomplished the day before? What were my wins from the day before? What's my do not do list for today? What's my top priorities for the day? Who do I need to reach out to and help today? I don't need that shit written down. I can have a blank piece of paper and still journal. Even if I don't even keep that paper, if it gets discarded, it doesn't matter. It's a point of getting it out there, getting that shit out into the world, out into the universe, and making that shit happen. So if you're nonstop, you have your beats down, ba bop, ba bop, ba bop, and then you have to travel, you have to go to, on a business trip, you're going on a vacation, you can't lose those fucking beats or now you're going to be starting from scratch. You're going to dig yourself in a hole and you're going to be wondering why you're not getting where you want to be in life. You're not in the shape you want to be in. You don't have the happiness and fulfillment that you fucking want and you don't have as much motherfucking money as you want. Keep it going with the journaling, with the gratitude, with the connecting with people. What, what, are, you, what are you grateful for? Like, you, if you can't, if you, if you have a, if I tell you to put five things you're grateful for and it shouldn't just be my health, my family, my kids, like, they get, like, come on, you can get a little more creative than that. Some oh, days my gratitude list will be 30, 40 things long and I'll just fucking keep going. Whatever at that moment, it might be that day I'm grateful for fucking cool t-shirts or maybe I'm grateful for palm trees. Maybe I'm grateful for a pool or a jacuzzi, a good pen. I like a good fucking ink pen that though, I like the way it comes out when I write. I'll write that sometimes. I'm grateful for the fucking pen. I'm grateful for good paper that I'm journaling on. You good books. I'm grateful for smart motherfuckers who wrote books that I can learn from. So surprised by the stuff that you're gonna come out. What I do at the end of the day, I am saying and thinking. I am grateful for sweaty balls, double ply toilet paper for wiping ass. I am grateful for the vibrators. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> this is a show. Okay, what I'm grateful for. I have a little rock that I got in one of the uh, events that we went to at dinner. We got two rocks with gratitude and one is by my desk and one is at by my by my bed. And before I, I literally lay down and go to sleep, I hold this rock and think of the day. And I don't know what it is, but this rock gives me a peace. And I think, okay, what am I grateful for today? It's amazing how many little things you can find. Maybe somebody said something to you. Maybe you had a great connection with your child. Maybe your child did something special for you. Be grateful, guys, what you receive that day because if you are not thankful for what you have, how can you go farther in life? And a lot of times when I ask people, they are not sure and they will give me very generic answers like Steve said in the beginning. Whatever is around us, you can be totally grateful for. So think today and go deep on that. 
Next thing is your, your waking up time, your rest and recovery time, your going to sleep time. That shit shouldn't change. Or at least it shouldn't change drastically. Like, I'll wake up, I'll, I'll get up at 5 a.m. the latest every day, Monday through Friday, no matter what. Last night, we stayed up a little late because the kids didn't have school today. They wanted to play some video games, a little extra, so we stayed up late. Guess what? I'm still up at fucking 5 a.m. today. Doesn't matter. That's, that's on me. If, I'm, if I don't feel good waking up at 5 a.m., all right, learn your damn lesson, dummy, and don't, don't let it happen again or often. But then also, you need rest and recovery time throughout the day. You need rest and recovery time throughout the week, throughout the, the month, throughout the year. On top of that, you need to be, if you're, if you're waking up early, still get up early on the weekends. Maybe not the same time. I don't get up at 5 a.m. on the fucking weekends, but I'll, I won't get up at 8 or 9 a.m. But then your body gets adjusted. This is the funny thing, that your body gets adjusted on the sleep that you, you need. So even if you go to sleep a little later, I realize that a lot of times I wake up at 5 and I have to purposely think, I, gotta, I need more sleep on the weekend. I don't need to get up that early. Your body, your natural clocks gets adjusted and... That's what you almost want. So you are ready to roll on the weekend. But it's still early because you're just shifting the day because you're probably staying up a little later. You're getting up maybe a little bit later, but it's not like you're sleeping all day like a lazy fucking bum in your pajamas all day. You're still getting up, making it happen, getting some work done. Work should still get done. Work can still get done in all these situations. The weekend, you still should get work done. On vacation, you can still get work done. And you could, you're could, you like, why Why would I want to go on vacation? You're a workaholic. No, motherfucker. I'm going to explain it to you in a second. The, the, when disasters are happening, when all this stuff, lockdowns, quarantines, whatever the fuck, work can still get done, even on the weekends. Saturday, I'll work tops two hours on a Saturday. Tops. That's early in the morning. I'll still get up fairly early. Let's say I get up at 7. I'll work from 7.30 to 8.30 or to 9 maybe. If, there's, if I don't have any kind of calls or anything. And that's just to get some work done so you can feel good about it and know you got some stuff done, catching up on stuff for the week, setting the tone for the week coming up, make those few important things, get some emails written that you're gonna be sending out Monday morning, things like that. Shit that's gonna move the needle. Important priority, top priority stuff that's done early in the morning, you're not gonna get bothered. Then on top, on top of that, you can even be on vacation and work. Imagine this. So you're saying, oh, you're, you're, you're not supposed to be doing that on vacation, you're supposed to shut it down and unplug. So part of the vacation, sure. But if... I could two hours a day or one hour a day or maybe every other day on vacation or whatever you want to call it. If I, if I have to work for two hours, like we were in fucking Costa Rica for I don't even know how long, 10 days or some shit. I don't even know how long, a while. First of all, it's a little, it's not, especially if you work for yourself, to go that amount of time without doing any work is not the brightest idea. But I still had some, a few sales calls. I still had a few coaching calls and I'd get maybe an hour of work tops done Almost every day, not even every day. And let's pause for a second. How did we do this? You had a coaching call and I had a coaching call. So Steve actually left for the time. You left and I stayed in the room and I was doing coaching call and you left. But then we switched. You stayed and I left. You can get your laptop, your call anywhere. Nowadays, everything is, you have Wi-Fi. You can connect to the world. And But also, like, you're saying, why, why would I want to work on vacation? Well, because then that gives you the ability to go on vacation, not just once a year and have to think all year. First of all, it makes you have the, the finances to do it, the productivity to do it, the, the work ethic that gets you there to go on vacation and go away every month, maybe. How about that? Or every three months or every two months going somewhere on the road, traveling, doing shit all the fucking time. If, if, that's, if that's the only price you have to pay is working for an hour in the morning, when you wake up, when you're away on vacation, to be able to go on vacation every month or every two months or just travel, see the fucking world, do what you want to do, live life on your own terms, have the personal freedom to do whatever the fuck you want to do, fuck yeah, sign yes. me up. Fuck but yeah. What this comes down to. Because then after that hour of work, hold on, after that hour of work, you're still going to have the whole free day of whatever you want to call it, vacationing, whatever, where you're still maintaining everything we already mentioned, the workouts, the nutrition, the reading, the meditating, the controlling your time, controlling the day, controlling your attitude, all the things we're talking about, no matter what's going on, no matter where you're going, even on fucking vacation. And even talking about the phone, let's talk about the phone. Let's say tonight, it's, what's today? Friday night, say Friday night? Yes. Usually Friday night, I won't have anything to do on the phone, but let's just say I had to get on the phone, a phone call today for an hour for business. Like, you think, oh my God, you're, that's just a workaholic. You shouldn't be on the phone. It's like family time. We have dedicated slots for all that stuff. But even if I had to disrupt one of those at one time on the phone, that's like what work is. That's what business is these days. I'm home. I work from home. I'm home all day. I see the kids more than anyone I, that I know. So I'll be in the middle of the day. I could stop and watch a movie with them if I want to or play games with them. We work out together in the middle of the fucking day every single day, seven days a week. So if 
I have to, if the, if the price I have to pay is once in a while, if I need to open up the phone, it's like, cool, go and do it. It's not like you're stuck with your face in your fucking computer all the time and staring at it. But if I have to go and do it on a weird time, that's not really work time. Sure. Go and do it. That's how we make our living. That's how we get to go on the, do the live, live the life we want to live and have the personal freedom we want to have. If I have to do that once in a while without feeling guilty about it, because I'm not doing it all the time and I'm making the time all throughout the day to do other stuff that counts yes and this goes down to actually discipline and creating these habits and blocking of time but then also what i would like to point to parents that be um, in with connection with people around you when you have kids and you have to pick up the phone if you're going somewhere and it happened like we were we were traveling in costa rica we had very active schedule we went to a volcano trip but Steve communicated with me, communicated with kids. Hey guys, at this time, I'm going to step out away from you because I need to make a call. And I remember he stepped out and I was la- laughing doing an Instagram story that he was doing a call, but we were prepared for it. It wasn't like we what we saw in in Disneyland just recently, you know, somebody was calling, uh, talking on the phone. The, the, the kids were dragging him, like asking him, trying to interrupt his call because he didn't probably communicate with the kids. Hey, listen, I need to get an important call. And he's probably doing that all the time, all, the all time. day, the entire trip there. So now we- imagine the kids want you, but if you communicate, hey, listen, I will have a call for half an hour. Just give me the half an hour, but I will be with you. I'm going to give you my full attention. But if you're doing everything like half as on the phone, trying to do everything at the same time, business and being with people, that's not being present. That's not being connected. That's not giving somebody full attention. I've done it myself and it's horrible. It makes you feel horrible and you don't get anything out of it. You don't get anything out of the phone call because how can you make a good call with someone and ask them good questions when a kid pulling on your arm and screaming, it's hard. So kind of, I would say conditioning them and adjusting them, hey, listen, this is what I need. I'm not saying this is always easy, it's not. But we, 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 after repeating this stuff, eventually I think it's gonna work, it's gonna happen for you, it's gonna be easier for you. And so let's just finish it off with going to the next level of more survival, more being prepared again, at your home. You should have extra and additional stuff for the, say, say extra toilet paper so you don't have to go hoarding fucking toilet paper. Like, you should always have a little bit of extra. A little bit of extra toothpaste. A little bit of extra soap. All that's dental floss. You should have a little extra of that. So if you got stuck in the house for six months, who knows the fuck's gonna happen? You you used to think that sounded crazy when we, because we've lived like this all the time. So we got locked down and couldn't get to the store, couldn't get toilet paper. We were good. We were good. We had enough to to go for years of everything we needed, including food and water and ammo and all that other good stuff. But you should have extra tissues, extra Q-tips, extra razors, shaving cream, all the goops and lotions that you motherfuckers put on and and go all day. All the goop. Like you say you're going to sleep. You say you're going to sleep at 930, but you don't get into bed till fucking 1026 because you're too busy in the bathroom hearing these noise like all this squeaking and squishing between that and the vibrators. Who knows what time you're going to fucking get to sleep. So what is he talking about? Have, pre- have your stuff, have it prepared. And same thing for travel. Like when it's time to go somewhere, if you just got to grab and, and I have several bags for the entire family ready, not even for an emergency, yeah. but just for traveling. You just should for- see the collection of the bags. I'm like, he's like a bag hugger. What is this? Like each week? A bag you- hugger? <laughs> the fuck is a bag the- hugger? I don't know, I'm just- but when it's time, say we have to go to, to travel, I could just grab the bag that has the additional bathroom stuff, the additional workout stuff, the additional nutrition and supplements, even water, and it's done. You don't have to start packing all that stuff. Like you have a, a specific bag that's used just for out of the house for with all your additional bathroom stuff. I have all the contact lens stuff in there, extra sh- razors, shaving cream, all that stuff is there. Same for the workout, same for food, nutrition, supplements. So you don't have to pack that every time you got to go on a trip or on a vacation or an emergency or have to run out of the house or whatever it is, even for hiking, <laughs> for anything. Be prepared. Always have it, be ready for anything. The, the invasion is coming. The apocalypse is fucking here. The purge is happening. Be and ready for it. We learned our lessons, guys. So a lot of you learned this lesson just recently. Now is the time. Don't wait for the next time and procrastinate and say, I will do that one time. Really think, 
what were you lacking in this moment? What happened that you were maybe disconnected from the world? Maybe you need generators, maybe you need solar, uh, you know, uh, pa panels. Maybe you need something that will generate the energy. Be prepared, maybe food, whatever we were talking about. Make sure it's gonna happen. Make sure you're gonna do this. Make sure you're gonna purchase this weekend. It's not. And I know we talk about we talk about like for the apocalypse and the invasion, and that already is coming, and we need that, and we love that, and we want that, and we and we hope for it. But we hope. For besides it, that, we besides don't. that, on a, also just on on a regular daily basis, having that stuff ready for if there's a blackout, if there's the, the natural disasters, like with the the hurricanes and stuff, like things that just happen once in a while, or just when it's time to go and travel and go on vacation, not wasting time doing all that stuff. Like have this stuff ready, have this stuff prepared. It saves time, it saves money, it saves stress, it saves energy. I don't have to think about anything. I know when it's time to, for me to travel and I, I maybe travel once a month, once every other month, I don't have to stress about it and start packing stuff. It's already ready. I even sometimes have the clothes, specific clothes pack that I know I'm gonna need for different types of trips, uniforms or clothes or suits, whatever it is. Like be fucking prepared. For anything, and we have a we have a saying. One of our core values: if you're always on your A game, you never have to get on your A game. That basically means if you're always prepared, you never have to get prepared. And you know the weight that that lifts off your shoulders? It's fucking freedom. It sounds like it's militant and overbearing and whatever you are, whatever the fuck else you want to call it, and, and being like a control freak. Is it those things? Fuck yes, it is. I have nothing wrong with being a control freak, controlling my future, controlling my time, controlling my energy, controlling my life, controlling my fucking freedom. I have no problem controlling that. So fuck yeah, I'm a control freak. Although, and it's freedom. It's freedom. It saves you time too, guys. It really is. It, you plan this, you spend time, but then becomes you, you, it becomes automatic. Something becomes automatic. And then you can actually, based on being automatic, then you apply certain changes. How high are your hooker heels? I just realized you're like the same fucking height as I me. I told you. I look like a midget. What the fuck? <laughs> I told you that what I'm human, going high. What human ab I'm going actually high, needs those? Guys. I'm what? Going high. <laughs> you are high. What high, human high, needs high, high, high. heels like that unless you're working the street corner? What are Excuse you? Excuse me? Who actually okay, needs by that? By the way, who? Please, who is waiting for the apocalypse, for the invasion? Please write it down. Who wants this? Because I do not want to be chased by a zombie. I do not. Even though I train cardio every day. Train cardio. Run on the, the streets. Number one rule of the apocalypse, cardio. Cardio. C is for cardio. We're not going to be getting train. chased by zombies. We're going to be chasing. That's the problem with zombie movies. They always just run and go to survive. Like if they would just turn it around and plan a strategy to like attack and... Think of it as the enemy force. Like I've thought about this. Like in, I've thought about it deeply. This is one of my deep things that I journal about every day. Is if the zombie apocalypse happens, you take the war to them. Everyone just runs and hides, and the, the zombies keep multiplying and multiplying while the humans are dwindling down. Like you take, you have a strategy, and you take the war to them, and you eventually have to wipe them out so you can get back to civilization and fucking rebuild. Anyway, it's time to go. This was episode number nine of the Russian and the Freak. If you need help with any of this, if it, we we both offer one-on-one -on -one private coaching, OTD, that's operate to dominate in your mind, your body, and your business, so you can have more discipline, energy, confidence, be an action taker, a risk taker, make, take, make bold moves in your life so you can finally have the personal freedom that we're talking about by setting boundaries and being productive, more productive than ever, finally living life on your own fucking terms and being your freak self. That's what the private coaching is really all about. And in addition to that, the added bonus the Russian also will provide coaching on wiping your ass, on, on vibrators, and cleaning your sweaty motherfucking balls. So if you want to help with any of that, you want to talk about any of that, <laughs> send a private message. We'll get on the phone. We'll figure out which type of program is a good fit for you. There are several different options. Let's talk about it. This one it. is not included. <laughs> Let's talk about it. And we got to get rolling. This was episode number nine. We will see you next time. In case no one told you yet, I told you the beginning, I'm going to tell you again in case you missed it. You are fucking awesome. No excuses. No excuses.